Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, back to working on the metal plane of restoration today and excited that we're getting ready to start scraping in the base here to match the table. So um, just to kind of fill you up, if you haven't been following the series, we've got our machine, I've, all the, both of these parts have been ground, uh, professionally ground on a big surface grinder. Uh, I've got my base now all leveled and aligned. We've got this thing flat and parallel to less than a thousand, or about a thousandth of an inch over 10 feet, which is well within specs for it. Um, we've got our table here. It's also been ground to match, but we're gonna start scraping in uh, the base. And I've got oil grooves that I have cut in here everything is ready to go the game plan here is is I want to go ahead and start on the base we're going to use the top the ground surfaces on the top as our master so this will basically be our straight edge that we're using uh, that we're bluing up so the game plan is we'll put the the blue dye or black dye I think in this case on the, the ink on this I'll put some contrast on the base we'll come over here and print it we'll find our high spots and we'll start scraping actually what I'll do first is I'm going to go ahead and put a crosshatch scrape pattern on here. I'll just blindly do it across the whole deal. That'll give me a pattern that I can start working off of and then we'll start scraping in for getting good contact from one end to the other uh, all the way around on this machine. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that because this thing was professionally ground by Cash Masters up at Kinetic up in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It shouldn't take a whole lot of scraping to get this thing in. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, but until I start seeing how things are printing up over here uh, with the ink, we, we just really won't know for sure. So anyway, excited to get there and see that. So my table, I've, I've moved it in here. I had it kind of in storage in there on my welding table for the last several months. Uh, I've got it sitting up over on my heavy duty saw horses. Also got the gantry crane here with my lifting sling on here where we can pick this thing up and move it over. It's going to be a little bit of a, uh, doing some lifting here to be able to do this. This, is, this uh, table weighs about 1,500 pounds, uh, almost, almost a ton, three quarters of a ton uh, is what this thing weighs. And I did go ahead and put the rack on the bottom so it will mesh with the bull gear in the, in the machine here. And when I put this on here, I'm going to need to kind of slide it back and forth. This thing's so heavy, there's no way I'm going to be able to move it by hand. But hopefully I can move the pulleys down here by hand and with the gearing and stuff here on that rack I should be able to move it back and forth a time or two to, to get a good print. So without further ado I'm going to get my scraper out, my Biax power scraper. We're going to go ahead and get us a pattern cut in this and then we'll uh, start bluing things up and see how things look. It almost seems a shame to come in here and scrape on this beautifully ground surface, but scraping is really what we need to do here. It gives us individual high points that this table can slide on, gives us oil grooves. If we leave this as two um, ground surfaces, they will literally stick together, just like two flat pieces of glass will stick together. We really need to create that those little voids in there, still have the individual high points that it rides on. Uh, that's going to work a lot better than just a ground surface on a ground surface. So to do this scraping. I've got my Biax power scraper. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to have to probably get used to cutting at these angles. I'm used to doing things more flat, but uh, I think we can do it. And it's going to take me a while to do this. Uh, we won't get to see the whole process, but I'll start by going in one direction at a 45 degree angle. Uh, I'll do that on all four of the ways, and then I'll come back and cross it the other way at 45 degrees, and that'll give me that checkerboard pattern that I'm looking for. So let's get in here and do it. I need to make my stroke a little bit longer. Let me adjust this biax. When you're scraping, when you're roughing, doing your initial scraping, you want a real long stroke uh, on the, the scraper. As you get things closer into being finished, you want to shorten that stroke up. And there's an adjustment in here you can do that. So when you're going for individual points, you can have a real short stroke. Much longer stroke. That's going to be longer scrape marks. And um, we'll just start scraping.
I'll bring you back in a little bit after we uh, do this. It's gonna take a while. A lot of area to cover here. Well, I just took one pass on each side of these two ways and only on one half of the, of the machine. I've still got to come back and do the cross hatch in the other direction. Just this uh, down and back basically took me about a half an hour. This is going to be quite a job to get all the scraping done. And uh, I feel like I'm a contortionist over here having to bend over and get in weird angles to do this. But it's doable. It's going to be a lot of work. Just a close up here of the scraping. And what's interesting is, is all the chips are getting down here in this bottom and you can really see how much uh, metal we're flaking off of there. Uh, scraping moves more metal than you think. All right, we're gonna put the cross hatch on there now. This will give us something we can go and uh, ink up and really see how it's going. So again, uh, that last pass down and back took me about 30 minutes. I'm not going to make you guys watch all of this. Just say that it's a slow process and my back's hurting. I swept up all my shavings from the first uh, two passes here. So I've got my crosshatch put in on uh, one half of the ways. And uh, you can see scraping does remove a fair amount of metal. I'm going to I'm going to try to keep keep all this stuff and just see how much metal we, we take off of this machine. That'll be interesting. I'm basically capturing it all in that V-way. So uh, anyway, I've never really seen that. Usually it just kind of goes everywhere. You see the pile on the floor when it's over, but that's interesting to see how much we're actually removing. So I've got this uh, first part done, and uh, now I need to do the other side. and. From there, we can do our first print, but uh, I'm happy with how that's looking. It looks great, uh, real happy. Just another shot of what it looks like there after that first uh, cross hatch. Got a nice pattern in there, and uh, this will give us a good place to start from. Uh, I, I've mapped it out. I kind of know where my high spot should be when we print it, but uh, we'll see for sure once we put the table in there and match it out. Continuing on here with the scraping, this is my last pass on these ways. So I basically had to do two ways, two sides per way, and then I had to do them in two directions. So that's eight passes all together. And uh, we are working our way down this last pass now. Gotta love the power scraping here. It would take a lot of time to do this by hand. It's completely doable, and that's the way they used to do them a long time ago. But uh, this Biax power scraper really makes short work out of this comparatively. And I say that because uh, even, even so, I probably got an hour just in doing these uh, eight passes here with a with the power scraper and my back's about to kill me. I was bending over. Got another pile of cast iron shavings here. Uh, no real reason to keep these. I'm just curious as to how much uh, metal we scrape out of here. Be interesting. So that was some work. 
But uh, we got the first round of just blind scraping. I've got a cross hatch pattern in here now. I feel comfortable going ahead now and blueing this thing up. And we can really start working and seeing what we need to do to, to straighten this thing out and get it like it needs to be. Next step, before I do that, though, I want to just uh, uh, stone these things. Uh, I want to take out any burrs that were uh, put in there from the scraping. It always raises up a little bit of a burr. And uh, I'm using my precision ground flat stones for this, which does a really good job of getting those nice and flat again. So uh, these precision ground flat stones come in a pair and you can just kind of true them up by rubbing them against each other. I love my precision ground flat stones. These are some round ones. These are actually some stones that I had. And uh, my, my buddy Lance Botsley, who makes the precision ground flat stones, he ground these for me, precision ground them flat. So I turned them in from just a regular pair of round stones into the flat stones. neat things about this these stones is uh anytime you hit a little burr or something you can just feel them through this you don't get that when you know when they're uh, just a regular stone but when they get precision ground like this you, you really just don't know it until you feel it but i can feel every little burr on there and when you knock it down it's just as smooth as silk All right. Just uh, come in here with a little stop back, make sure I got all the trash out of these. So I've got my contrast on here and I'm just using a, uh, this, this is a Charbonnel etching ink. This is Cardinal Red. I just used a little paint roller to kind of put a real thin layer on here and then came in and kind of wiped the excess off of the paper towel. And this contrast just kind of really helps you see what's going on when you're spotting it. It takes that shine off of the surface and you can tell um, when you come in here and scrape, it kind of, you can see your new scrape marks versus the old scrape marks. Uh, it really just helps. And like I said, you can see the, the, the contrast between the dark color that we're gonna spot with better on this surface than you can on that shiny surface that doesn't have anything kind of knocking that glare off. All right, I'm gonna get my uh, table ready to ink up. I'll show you that and we'll see what we got over here. Now I'm gonna lift this uh, table up just a little bit where I can uh, get to those ways up on the bottom. There it comes. I want to keep it over that those uh, sawhorses. I may have to pull them out just a little bit. And I've got a roller here. This has actually got a carbon black ink on it. Same thing kind of as before. I'm just going to put a thin layer on the ways down here. And I had yesterday when I had this out, I had stoned these ways, cleaned them up real good. So we should be ready to go ahead and, and put some uh, spot and ink on this. So let me go ahead and get a nice coat on this and we'll see what we can do. A lot of surface area to cover on this part. This is by far the biggest uh, piece I've ever tried to spot. I hope this works the first time. All right, we are about ready here to 
start dropping this down. I think I'm more or less over my ways. down and now what I want you to do is kind of slide it back and forth and I should be able to grab my pulley over here and hopefully do that yeah so what I think I'm going to do is run that off the end down that way Come back this way a little bit. And go back. It's actually sliding very well. All right, we're going back up now. And hopefully I had my blue on there thick enough that we got some transfer. I think it will. Well, guys, it's been one of those days. Uh, about the time I got this thing lifted off on that first pass, my phone rang and had a little, little uh, minor emergency come up, nothing of any significance, but I had to leave and was gone for about four hours. Finally just got back home this evening and uh, back out in the shop and I'm wanting to get this thing finished up or worked on some more, but now we've got some severe weather that's coming in. You're probably gonna hear some rain on the roof and thunder and lightning and stuff. I'm probably about to actually get out of the shop because uh, there's some tornado watches and warnings around me right now and I probably need to be in the house and not out here but um, I need to go ahead and get this video wrapped up so let me show you where we're at um, after that first printing I've got some contact it's showing up very similar to what I expected uh, and if you remember where we, when we ran the auto collimator on these ways we kind of mapped it out I knew I had kind of a high spot here a high spot here and a high spot on the end which is right under my feet right under the leveling feet on this machine and a little bit of a sag in between there and I'm talking tiny amounts we, we, when we measured it it was only about a thousandth of an inch total up and down and parallel and everything else for over 10 feet so it's really not a lot but it's showing up in the print so let me just kind of zoom in here and kind of show you what, what it looks like so I've got a pretty hard print over here um, on the end again this is kind of where I expected that um, you don't there's a little bit of contact in here but you probably can't see it but it's actually got a pretty good print on this side so that tells me I need to kind of widen it out just a little bit down here nothing of any significance making contact over here got a few little dots on the inside not a lot of contact on that inside uh, more on the outside it looks like you know, we may need to widen it and I'm talking tiny amounts here because I'm making contact all the way down here we get down here to about the the middle and we got a pretty hard mark right there so that's telling me I, i'm a little bit high right there and um on down in here it's making contact good news is is while i don't have a lot of contact in these low areas i'm seeing marks pretty much all over that's telling me that i'm really really close i don't think it's going to take a whole lot to scrape this in so um I got to get this video wrapped up for tonight so that I can get this published in the morning. Uh, we're going to come back and do some more work on this and we'll bring you guys along when we do. Uh, but I'm going to come in here and basically start scraping out these areas that have contact. And it's going to be a matter of going back and forth, back and forth until we get uh, the contact that we're looking for. And uh, that weather's starting to pick up out there. I'm going to bail ship here and uh, get up to the house and Hopefully we won't lose power tonight and I can get this video edited. 
Well, guys, uh, I was hoping to get a little bit farther along on this. I knew I wasn't going to get it done today, but uh, uh, we're calling it. That's going to be it. That's going to be a wrap. So, as always, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, come back and check us out in the next video. We'll be doing some more work on getting this some machine scraped in. Based on what I'm seeing again, I, I think it's going to be. It's not going to be a tremendous amount of work to get this bottom part done. I think we're really close. We should be with the grinding that was done. Um, Cash Masters did an outstanding job on it. So this thing should come in pretty quickly, but there is a little bit of work that needs to be done and that's to be expected. Guys, uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.